which are the key factors for a successful year transformation process in your vision? Now, first of all, um, I'm not going to start with technology. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with people. I'm going to start with process. So for me, a big uh, key, for, key success factor is that you transform the business based on what people, what citizens really want mm -hmm. and what your employees really want. Mm -hmm. uh, where do they see the biggest benefits? So number two is really what are the big benefits uh, that, that are going to drive the transformation? Mm -hmm. Number three is definitely, you know, do you have the right technology in place to make this happen? Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a mix of, you know, do we have cool things that attract me as a consumer of information, as a citizen? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, do I have a stable platform somewhere uh, in the back office that helps interacting with all these people? Mm -hmm. So those are my, my three main critical success factors. Thank you. Uh, the second one, uh, which be the main risks in implementing a transformation process for a country like Republic of Moldova? Government transformation is is always a, a very is always a very complex endeavor, and the the main risk that we we see are twofold. The first thing is um, going into point solutions, going into silos, going into separate solutions that do not talk to each other. Mm -hmm. We've seen many countries where, where this has been done and where afterwards we have a set of modern solutions but no, no real end-to-end -end process view. Just as Emil said, um, the process view needs to be key. I see that Moldova is there on the right track with the e-government center, mm -hmm. but of course this is a main risk. The second risk that I would see is um, reinventing the wheel in principle. Mm -hmm. So that means going, considering them oneself to be very, very, very unique and thus doing everything from scratch. Um, we've seen this several times in government. And of course every country is unique, not only cultural-wise but also in some processes, some, some laws. But nevertheless there's a huge, huge overlap, I would say at least 85 to 90 percent. And I work in this area since 1985, so I think I have a pretty good view. And uh, adopting best practices, learning from others, I think that's how to mitigate that risk. And here I also see Moldova in a pretty good way. Mm -hmm. May I add a third risk? But just, it's a political risk. Time. Do you, you know, it should be independent from whomever is going to be elected. So it needs to be continuing because this is not something you establish in two years. It is a transformation, a road of transformation over many, many years. So that's why it needs to be politically independent. How can your government affect business community, simple uh, citizens or every citizen of Moldova, and maybe public servants? It depends what areas you're looking into, but if I should give a general uh, answer, interaction with government will be easier, mm -hmm. simpler to use, more intuitive, just like, like using Apple. If you do it via mobile devices, if you, it will become more transparent. Mm -hmm. um, not only the decision according me, why do I get this approval, why don't I get, but also how government overall works. Mm -hmm. I think this fits pretty well also in the transparency initiative that is currently ongoing in Moldova. It will also lower the cost of public administration, mm -hmm. which is citizen as a taxpayer, pretty important. For the business environment, so companies, pretty much the same reasons, it will be easier to deal with government, and government sets the framework for investments. Mm -hmm. This will count for both international companies investing in Moldova, but also for Moldovan companies, small and medium enterprises as well as, as bigger ones. So same here. Also more, rel more reliability, more compliance uh, to, to rules, so it's, you can have a better investment environment. Looking into the citizen service, uh, servants, I th the experience that we have is that nobody has to, to be afraid of his job. What it is is just get, get rid of boring, repetitive tasks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and going into tasks that create additional value. Mm -hmm. So in fact what we really see, and you have remember I asked the Austrian lady exactly yeah. this question, what we really yeah. see is job enrichment and higher job satisfaction. And I met several civil servants here in Moldova and I feel that there's really 
really a drive to, to modernize the country, mm -hmm. and, and this will will enable by getting rid of boring tasks and really focusing on values. More creation. Just bringing people at a, at a yeah. higher maturity level, yeah. right? Uh, you yeah. operate in how many countries? Uh, 100, 120 countries. 20 countries, and you have been involved in similar, <coughs> I'm sorry, in similar projects? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all and over the world. For all countries have implemented the government projects. Oh, which country experience would you present for us as a study case? Any cases. So we have seen today, we have seen Singapore, we have mm -hmm. seen Israel, we have seen, uh, we heard Austria, main, yeah. very important case. Uh, we heard Canada, um, you know, could be 20. Yeah, this, 20 there are countries. others, Lithuania, there are, and then in some, for example, in, in other areas, it's, it's the Nordic countries, so, but the, the best case studies for, for Moldova, I think, are, can be found exactly what we've seen today. In Singapore, in Austria, in the Netherlands, in Lithuania. I believe Moldova should be next in that, uh, in that sequence, and uh, you know what, what you have as an advantage is that you can learn a lot from the others mm -hmm. and there is really a willingness to be very different mm -hmm. but also to you know to put uh, Moldova uh, as a kind of the new center of gravity that that's you know I've been here now twice I've, I've spoken with the Prime Minister twice mm -hmm. that's the at atmosphere that I see a kind of there is a sense of urgency on the one hand to, to clear all the basics, mm -hmm. right? And that's where you can learn a lot from other countries. But there is also a drive to put Moldova on the map and say this is where we were going to be famous for. And that kind of transformation in the, in the people's mind, that is something that will make you very successful. And you could be kind of, uh, that we, we discussed it in the past, kind of center of excellence. You know, when you went through that transformation, why can't you leverage all those skills that you have built with this mm -hmm. for the outside world? Other former Soviet Republic states or in North Africa. The, you know, these transformations are happening everywhere. But this country seems to be, the, there seems to be urgency. There seems to be kind of the atmosphere we're going to make it happen. The yes, we can of uh, <laughs> uh, of, of uh, Europe, mm -hmm. um, and also the uniqueness of uh, the, the cultures, the languages, uh, the, the population that makes maybe you a, a rock star country in terms of transformation. That's, that's you should cool. you should be bold, really bold. Yeah. Why? You are now. You don't have stru overcome structures mm -hmm. that are up and running, like for example in, in our countries, where we have a lot of resistance. Now we have this atmosphere of changing things, and you can learn from others, avoid their mistakes, mm -hmm. yeah. and on the other hand, do what really be state of the art. And if you follow that route, I would uh, would say within three or four three years, you can be among the top 20 of the, of the e-government if you follow that route. Uh, you have a fair chance to do so. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.